and forth. Last week, we emphasized the need for prayer. We call you and call the church to pray for seven minutes at seven. Uh, we gather here as a staff to pray. That evening, I told the, the staff, hey, listen, it's Tuesday, so I don't know how many are still praying seven minutes at seven. Uh, but I expect and I hope that you're keeping it a habit. Every time your alarm goes off, just pray with us. We're praying. And isn't it beautiful to know that somebody else is praying at the same time and asking God to do his will in our lives So many needs around us, so many things that we need God's intervention. And when we pray, God promises to answer. But today, I wanted to shift our focus to the importance of God's word. Uh, Not as a prescriptive thing or a, a demanding thing in terms of you have to obey God's word, although you do have to obey God's word, but more of a reminder of God's love for us. If he wrote and he gave us his word, it's for us to know his heart and to know his will for our lives and his plans for our lives and to trust his word no matter what we go through. Last week, I emphasized the need for obedience uh, in in the part of Joshua, you know, be courageous to obey everything I have commanded you. Uh, And today, although we're going to be reminded about that powerful truth, I want us to see God's word as the evidence of God's love for us. If you fast forward years later, uh, John chapter 1, 14 says, and the word became flesh. Jesus became that living word. Jesus became that expression of love towards people who were lost and destined to die in hell for eternity. And God in his love and great and mercy intervened and gave us his word who became flesh and dwelled among us, right? In the beginning, John 1, 1 says, was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was there in the beginning. Jesus is eternal, coexistent with God. He is divine. He was, is, and will be. And that Word that was given to Israel became flesh. You see, about 77% of our Bibles uh, is the Old Testament. Only about 23% is the New Testament. When you see people in the New Testament talking about God's word, they're talking about the Old Testament. The New Testament was being written. And so all those stories were told in the New Testament were written there for our sake so that we would learn God's way and follow his direction. And so we're here with Joshua and maybe for the next few weeks, things may, will, may and will sound repetitive because we will re- repeat things. How many of you need repetition? Right? You read something, read it later, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that the last time I read it. And you have to read it again, right? And then let it produce fruit in your life. And so we got to remember a few things. Joshua is the, uh, the one that takes over after Moses dies. And we often forget that Joshua has been there for the long run. He was probably born in Egypt. He went through the wilderness. He was trained in war. He was an assistant to Moses. He was one of the spies that went and inspected the promised land. And out of 12, him and Caleb were the only ones that brought a positive report. So Joshua is about perhaps in his 80, 85 years old when he's given the task to take the people into the promised land. And you know, leaving things behind is not easy, but that was the task for Joshua. Leaving things behind behind is not easy because sometimes we don't understand why we must leave them behind. See, Israel had to leave Egypt and In the middle of the journey, they complained and they wanted to go back to Egypt. It would be better for us to eat what they gave us in Egypt, they complained. And so Moses struggles with the people of Israel. We're rooted in a constant dissatisfaction with the implications of embracing what God has for us. In other words, if God's going to give you something, you must have to be willing to leave some things behind. And Israel didn't like that. You see, every promise of God comes with a responsibility. Just like every promotion comes with a responsibility. Just like that new car comes with a responsibility. Or that new baby comes with a responsibility. Or marriage comes with a responsibility, right? Everything comes with a responsibility. And it's the same with God. They were taken out of Egypt. 
with Moses, they were going to be taken into the promised land through Joshua. And their faith along the journey would be tested, and it was tested, and many failed. A whole generation died in the wilderness. They spent more time in the wilderness than was necessary. Doubt and fear is what delayed the promise of God in their lives. And so now Joshua, he's take them, taking them into the promised land. And that is also our journey in our lives. When Jesus or God finds us, he typically finds us in the middle of a mess, right? And we need help and we need salvation. And he takes us out of something to bring us into something new that is according to his will. But sometimes we are a lot like Israel. We don't like to be told what to do. Any people like that in this room today? Don't tell me what to do, right? I want to do what I want and I want God to bless it, right? <laughs> and then like Israel, we also complain. And we often, more than not deal with fear and doubt fear and doubt and because of fear and doubt we have delayed God's promises now our biggest struggle is that we constantly connect God's promises with things possessions places but the greatest promise given to Joshua was beyond the promised land was the promise of his presence God told Joshua, I will be with you, right? And I will be with you. And that's the promise that we should anchor our souls to when it comes to having a relationship with God. Joshua is a picture of Jesus, just like Moses was. Moses took them out of Egypt. Jesus leads them into their God-given destiny. And I want to reread some verses we read last week. And just as a reminder, good things in life, you must commit to follow knowing that you have to leave some other things behind. There's no way around it. So the passage, very familiar to you and me, be strong and be courageous, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 through 9. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. That you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua is in charge. For him, this is something new. He's been under leadership of Moses. He's been dealing with the consequences of other people's stubbornness. And that hurts, doesn't it? You see, sometimes pain comes to you not because your own choice, but because of other people's choices. Other people's choices will affect you just as much as your choices will affect other people. And we find Joshua in the middle of the wilderness, dealing with what the wilderness implies, spending more time than he should have spent because other people would not believe what he believed from the beginning. That's a struggle. Now he's into something new, a new task, a new responsibility. Kind of like when you go to that new school, new job, new career, new whatever it is. And see, some things can be planned out, some things you can kind of predict, but some other things just come at you out of nowhere. They just happen. Time can be stopped, time keeps on ticking, and I make this reference as often as I can, because I remember when I was a kid and my grandfather would tell me, oh, mijo, you don't know what it is. I'm, I'm 80-something now, and it just happened like that. And he would tell me that his grandfather told him the same thing. And here I am, not there yet, of course. But suddenly my oldest is about to finish high school. And I'm like, what? Why? Can we slow this down? Can we take another five years of high school? You can't, right? Some things just 
come at you. And they just happen. And I can imagine Joshua for so long of being in the wilderness. Suddenly, suddenly he's, he's at the place where he's going to finally see God's promises fulfilled. And I feel like Joshua kept his heart so pure along the way, you know, because it's hard to keep your heart pure when you're surrounded by negative, stubborn, hard-headed people. But he kept thinking, God made a promise. God made a promise. Send him to see the promised land. He goes in, comes back. Everybody's negative. He's like, no. I mean, they're big, but God told us he would give us the, big, the victory. And now he's in that place and he's he's like i you know that's why he could stand up and turn to the people later on we're gonna see this and say listen we're going there and i don't know about you but me and my house we will serve the lord <laughs> but see it was it was it was a, a a security he had not because of the place he was being taken into but because of the presence of the one that was leading him into that place you see, sometimes we are paralyzed and sometimes we're pushed into the new and, and some of us need to actually move on to what's next and sometimes it's not up to time or, or places. It's about decision and saying, God, I'm stepping into what you're calling me to. Some of you are about to face new challenges, new opportunities to make decisions. And if I can boil down this message I, what I want to what I want to do is like push you into seeking God's direction for every decision you make above all things will it be hard yes will you be tempted to give up yes it might take time yes will it be worth it absolutely I want to tell you that if you place your trust in God, in his word, <laughs> in his promises, you can and you will overcome and you will do everything that God has commanded you because his word can be trusted. It was sealed when that word became flesh, dwell among us, died on the cross, resurrected and sent his Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. And what I love about Joshua's story is that we see very clear in these verses that God actually was aware of Joshua's fear. You see, sometimes we try to hide our fear. But God said clearly, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Listen, God knows your fears. <laughs> Shocker, right? We kind of know that, but we don't really know that. But God, God, God knows our fears. In fact, he knew Joshua's fears so much that he said, listen, I know you're afraid. That's why I'm telling you, just follow my lead. Follow my word. You will need my word. My word is what will ultimately guide you, give you strength, keep you focused. Invest yourself in, in my word. Keep it on your lips, God said. Meditate on my word day and night because it will not only keep you focused, it says it will make you successful and prosperous. That's what God told Joshua. Listen, Joshua, you're about to enter into a land where you're going to have to drive out many things. You will need my word. Are you afraid? Anchor your soul in my word. Maybe God is calling some of us to something different. And it's okay to be fearful. To take steps of faith. It's okay to be fearful. But ultimately and eventually we must come to realize that God is behind us. And is there to encourage us in what he has called us to do. Through his word. I read not long ago that fear is the parent of every kind of vice. Fear of conflict, fear of shame, fear of failure, fear that God will leave fidelity unrewarded and prayer unanswered. Fear of trusting God too much when he may not even really be there have you ever been in that place where you're praying and praying and praying it seems like god is just not answering <laughs> oh he knows 
He knows way better than all of us. He's behind us, with us, ahead of us. He sees all things. Nothing escapes his sight. He knows what you're going through. He knows your fears, your doubts, your struggles. And while our minds and feelings tell us one thing, we must have to come to the realization that his word is trustworthy. I mean, think about Joshua one more time with me for a minute. He's been taken out of Egypt and he saw God perform miracles. And then he saw how negativity prolonged their journey in the wilderness. And he could have easily given up on God. But he chose not to. Sometimes part of the journey is go through struggles and delayed promises. Sometimes it's not your fault. It's someone else's fault. But God is still faithful. Amen. God is still good. God is still trustworthy. And I'm willing to spend my life waiting on the Lord than waiting on anything else. Because in the end, he will deliver. In the end, there will be ultimate healing and salvation and peace and comfort and provision and abundance and health and strength. And everything is found in his presence. You see, but that doesn't happen with just positive thinking or just with the verse of the day. You need his word. You need his word. See, Joshua receives the encouragement so that he can encourage others. He was not just the recipient of encouragement. After that, immediately in verses 10 through 18, he encourages his leaders and then the commanders who would then encourage the rest of the people. Remember, last week we said, you and these people get ready because it's not just you, it's the people too, but it begins with you. It's not just about you. It's about the whole group of people, but it begins with you. And so last week we said, you and the people get ready. Now he is getting encouraged and now he's having to encourage his leaders to encourage the people. But this is not the first time that encouragement happens in this way. I'm sure, like I said, Joshua had questions. But, 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 but God, we, we, we've been here 40 years. Are you seriously going to do it again? Or, or Joshua could have said, I'm tired of dealing with people can you just take me <laughs> he was willing though to pass down that encouragement to tell the leaders listen god is going to give us that place go right i said it last week and i'm going to say it one more time your faith is contagious somebody's watching you He encouraged those around him. But the problem is with encouragement is that sometimes we feel discouragement ourselves and we think, how, how can I be an encouragement to others when I can't even keep up with myself? Once again, the focus was not on Joshua's ability or strength. The focus was on the promise of his presence along the journey. Joshua, be strong and courageous to trust my word because you will lead these people to the land that I promise you. It's on me. Your job is to trust my word and pass it down. <laughs> be contagious with your faith, with what, with what you believe about who I am because of my word in your heart. You see, our problems and our doubts are real and, and genuine, but we should actively look to encourage others in their own struggles. When you have a struggle, there's always someone close to you who has a bigger struggle than yours. Joshua probably remember when Moses had doubts and an unanswered questions. And You know, I'm reminded that this, every time you think about be strong and be courageous, you think about Joshua. But a similar, a similar word of encouragement came to Moses. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, it says, be strong and courageous. Sounds the same, right? Do not be afraid. Now, this is God talking to Moses. Do not be afraid and terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, you see, Moses is being encouraged. Moses calls Joshua now to encourage Joshua. 
Then later in Joshua, Joshua is encouraged and Joshua calls his leaders to encourage the people. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, be strong and courageous for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. Could it be, and I'm just proposing to you that instead of focusing our attention too much on our struggles, which are real and are genuine, with our dysfunctions, which are real and genuine, we should shift our focus to God's word more and more every day. And I'm not talking about reading the verse of the day or checking the mark that you read scriptures. I'm talking about soaking in God's word and, 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 and dwelling in his word and allowing his word to not just speak to our minds, but come into our hearts. Yes. You see, God shifted the focus off of Joshua and his doubts. And then he places all the attention of Joshua on his word. In verse 8, he said, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful day and night all the see you can't separate your christian walk from your other responsibilities you 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 can go to your work and say i'm just gonna put my faith aside and just be a good work you you it it's it's either you are or you are not it's all or nothing and 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 god is telling joshua joshua Look, I know you've been for 40 years in the desert. You've been trained in the military, you know, work. You're, you're the leader I picked for this because I know that you're capable. You have the gifts. You have the talents. You have everything with it. You have the courage, right? I just gave you courage. But, 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 but still, what you really need, it's my word. Not just to be read. I, I mean, I need you to memorize it. <laughs> I, I, I need you to meditate on it. I need you to obey my word, not just know my word. Because that's how you show that you're trusting my word. And then God doesn't say, and maybe, maybe you'll make it. He says, no, you will be prosperous and successful. Besides this verse, probably John 3, 16 is one of the most quoted verses, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Joshua's success in life is determined by the emphasis that he places on the word of God. That God commands Joshua to meditate on it. Meditate on it. How many of you like to drink coffee? I, I do. How many of you like to drink tea? Well... For the sake of the message, let me illustrate something with tea. By the way, I, I like tea. I prefer coffee. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I ran out of coffee this morning. So I have a cup of tea. So this is hot water, right? This is just hot water. You know, it's, it, just, just, just bear with me for the last few minutes. And... And how do you make a tea? You know how to make a tea, right? You, 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 you have to open this thing up, depending on how fancy you are. But you put it in hot water. This, this is hot water right now, right? I can't just drop it in and drink it, right? You know that, right? What, what are you supposed to do? You, you, you drop the, the tea bag in and then you let it what? Say it loud. I can't hear you. Okay, and what, what does that do? Why? Because it, it, it infuses the water with the flavors contained in that bag, right? It, it like, it, I was telling them this morning, it's like when you're eating cereal and, you, and it's soaked up in milk and you just put it, right? Like, like the water is doing that to the tea and, and then just the, just the flavors are, are uh, uh, infused into the water. And then after what, five minutes, four or five minutes? What's a good time? What, how, much, how much time do you like? Three, three minutes. Then you can drink it. Um, meditating on the Word of God takes a cognitive effort. 
How many of you struggle sometimes with some passages? You'll read them and then like, I got to read it again. I, right? But it also takes a spiritual focus. And you can't get that if you just drop in, read the verse, and take it out, and then think. You see, meditation is when you think long and hard on something. It's when you let it, you know, soak in and get the flavors. You know, every week it happens to me. I, I, I try to prepare ahead of time for for messages, for sermons, and then sometimes I'm just thinking and thinking and rethinking, and then suddenly <laughs> something drops and I'm like, oh my gosh, right? The sad thing is that too many times, and I've been guilty of it, we meditate in our problems way too long. Our circumstances way too long. And so we have our focus, our energy, our mental energy placed in the wrong place. <laughs> you fill the cup with boiling water. You put the tea bag of your choosing in there. Minutes later, it's ready. Now the tea is only drinkable because the hot water takes time to sit there and the tea infuses it. The tea would not be drinkable without time to sit. His word is not going to do in your life what you expect it to do unless you sit on it. We are the cup of hot water. The word of God is like the tea bag and the best way to meditate is to allow our mind to sit and soak up what we just read and heard from the word of God. And with so many noise in our world and with so many YouTube channels and YouTubers and TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and what else that tries to teach you biblical concepts, you're sometimes losing battles that you shouldn't even be fighting for when you have the written word of God in your pocket 24-7 that can speak to you words of life and comfort and strength. That will remind you that it's not your abilities or your circumstances that will determine your future, but that it's His Word that is filled with promises that will do what it will do if you choose to trust it. Would you stand up with me? And so God is telling Joshua, Shift your focus from your fear and doubts. Be strong and courageous. Shift your focus from your abilities. It's my word that will give you success and will make you prosperous. <laughs> Can we quit focusing on our doubts, our needs, our troubles? I'm not saying ignore them. I'm saying his word is more than enough. Amen. Joshua has been trained as a military ex expert. He, he knows Yet God reminds him that he will not be successful because of his might or his mind or the materials or the people. It's because of his word. God was about to do a work in his life and in the nation's life through him. But it would have to take Joshua realizing that this could only occur through God and his word and his guidance. And the same is true for us and our abilities. I know. I know you're good at what you do. I know you're capable. I know you're gifted. That can't take you to heaven. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. It's by a confession of faith and placing our trust in him. And if you're going through a struggle, I want to remind you, it sounds cliche, it sounds like it's simplistic. If you put your heart and mind in God's word, God will deliver. So, Father God, this morning, I pray that you will help us shift our focus onto you and you alone. Lord, I pray that you deliver, Lord, those that are being captive by sin, struggles, doubt, fear, insecurities. Lord, I pray that you even deliver those that are surrounded by bad company that is leading them, Lord, or misleading them in the wrong direction. Lord, this morning we choose to fix our eyes on you 
And we choose, Lord, to fix our eyes on your word and your guidance and the strength that comes from knowing that you promise to be with us no matter what we go through. Lord, in the end, in the end, those found in you will be saved. In the end, you have the victory. You are victorious, Lord. And we want to trust you with our lives. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Yeah, you can give God praise. Yes, We're going to...